Hi, this is Eric with Ameribraid, and today we're going to talk about the rotary platen. The biggest thing we hear about the rotary platen is that it saves time hand sanding. The goal is to be able to go higher in the grits to finer finishes right on the machine so that you save time, save hand work. The same effect can be accomplished with a contact wheel, which is rubberized and cushions the seam of the belt. However, then you end up with a concave grind. So if you still want a flat grind, the rubber belt riding over the hard platen underneath your abrasive belt will slightly cushion the seam of the belt every time it comes around and give you a better surface finish. Not only is it good for flat grinds as I just described, it's also useful for slat grinding and creating convex edges by using one of the other two sides that are unsupported. And by adjusting the belt tension, you can get different amounts of support to give different amounts of flex. People always ask, if I have a rotary platen, do I still need a flat platen? And you are still going to because you aren't going to be able to do heavy grinding on this. You still want to do all your heavy grinding against a hard platen, profile against a hard platen, and then come to this for your finish grinding. Some ways people combat heat is by adding a dry lubricant to the back side of the belt or by using a platen chiller. So one of the biggest limitations of a rotary platen is heat. A platen chiller is not intended to keep the piece you're grinding any cooler. No heat will be able to get through the belt, through your platen, and into the chiller. It is for keeping the platen cool to protect the heat treat of your platen and to slightly reduce the risk of melting your rubber belt. To change your belt or adjust its tension, you're going to have to loosen these three bolts using a 3 8 Allen. Some early models will require a quarter inch Allen for these two. But just crack those loose. And push back on this top wheel. That will make your belt loose enough to change. When you're reinstalling belt, do the same. Make sure you're pushed all the way back. Get started on the top and the back wheel first. And then slide over the bottom wheel. Be careful to match grooves on all three wheels before you pull tight. If you can see any of the grooves, then you're not aligned and you need to shift over. If you're going to be using the hard back section, you should be running the belt a lot looser than you might think because you're not relying on the belt tension to offer any support. The plate will be there to support the belt, so you will help reduce the problem of heat by leaving it as loose as possible. You should be able to fit a couple fingers in between the rubber belt and the platen. If it's tighter than that, then you might have heat problems, cause premature bearing failure, and melt your rubber belts. If you're going to use one of the slack sections of the rotary platen, then you can add a little more tension. By pushing away, feeling the belt tension until it's where you want it, and then tightening down. Another way you combat heat is by slowing down the belt speed. We typically run it no faster than 50%. Shiny still. So if you're spending a lot of time hand sanding your flat surfaces, the rotary platen might be a good option for you to reduce that amount of hand work you're doing. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in one of these rotary platens, you can check them out on our website, Ameribraid.com. While you're there, you can find a phone number and an email address to contact us with any questions. To make sure you don't miss anything, subscribe to our YouTube channel and we post a lot of daily content on Instagram, so follow us at Ameribraid.